What inspired you to write The Turquoise Ledge? Well, I decided um, that the time had come to do something with the notes I'd been keeping over the years, little notes. And then, too, I was really struck by the way the world has changed so fast. And I thought that if I didn't write about the way things were when I was a girl, that no one would ever know that there had been or that there was this different way of being. And I thought about the old folks and how they were and how they lived. And I realized that if I didn't put something, write something down about it, that it would just be for, you know, it would just go away or be forgotten. And I wanted younger, the younger generations to know that there were different ways of living and being in the world other than what we see around us today. How have the landscapes that you know changed over the past few decades, and what's driving those changes? What's driving those changes is greed, and the landscapes have, have changed in shocking ways, heartbreaking ways. And the way I was raised, and the way a lot of the people in the Southwest um, were raised, we related to the land as extensions of ourselves. In the years since I've moved to Tucson, um, it's shocking the way they just crush the 200-year-old saguaro cactuses, um, the, the way all kinds of beautiful living things are just crushed. These uh, foothill palo verdes, they get the beautiful um, yellow blossoms in the spring. It takes them hundreds of years to grow. And these people come and they have uh, no understanding. They're just driven by greed to build these badly built houses which they then sell to people with bad mortgages and well we know how that all ends out now. How can those of us who live in urban environments or perhaps in environments where we just don't appreciate nature learn to see it with with better eyes? Well I think it, it, it would be a process it's not an instant thing and I think that you can find connection anywhere I think that if you open your open your heart and open yourself to these other beings and um, their, uh, that their consciousness isn't so different from ours, that even in the city, maybe with pigeons, this sort of life affirming, um, you know, this, this connection that we can make with other living beings, it really just takes an openness, an openness of the heart, and then a little bit of solitude can help. A little bit of time alone, uh, to take a walk alone, um, so that we aren't talking to somebody. Can you tell me about your own relationship to the land, and particularly to animals? I know that's a big part of the Turquoise Ledge. Yeah, well in Turquoise Ledge, I wanted to describe the kind of friendship and even affection that I received from the wild animals. Tucson is a lonely place to be if you're a newcomer. Uh, there's a lot of transient population that comes through by transient, I don't mean transient, transient, but people come, they teach at the University of Arizona for a while, and then they don't feel comfortable there and they move on. And um, there's just a few of the wealthy founding families, and they're very insular, they don't, they don't you know, allow people in. Tucson's a very segregated uh, city. There's a whole town called South Tucson, and that's where the, uh, the Spanish-speaking people, um, that's where, where they're sort of pushed. It's uh, an unfriendly town, and so when I settled up in the hills, the most friendly beings were the rattlesnakes and the pack rats and the, you know, just the wild things, the bees and the hummingbirds. With just a little bit of, of showing that I was, I didn't mean harm. It was, it was really wonderful. Um, the animals and birds and things um, were were ready to be ready to be friends of mine. And so, those are my longest friends um, in the thirty, more than thirty-two years I've been there. So when I wrote the book, I um, I wanted to to pay notice to them, and in a way. Um, to, to, to help protect their lives because they're the ones who get crushed under the bulldozers. And so I wanted other people to understand that these creatures um, wa want to be connected with us and that they, in a sense, are part of us and that they can really give us sustenance and hope when nothing else in the human world can.